morning. It's Monday, December 20th, 2021. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for your journey today. Our devotion today is entitled, Differences, and our scripture is Genesis chapter 25. Isaac pleaded with the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was unable to have children. The Lord answered Isaac's prayer, and Rebekah became pregnant with twins. But the two children struggled with each other in her womb. So she went to ask the Lord about it. Why is this happening to me, she asked. And the Lord told her, the sons in your womb will become two nations. From the very beginning, the two nations will be rivals. One nation will be stronger than the other, and your older son will serve your younger son. And when the time came to give birth, Rebekah discovered that she did indeed have twins. The first one was very red at birth and covered with thick hair like a fur coat, so they named him Esau. Then the other twin was born with his hand grasping Esau's heel, so they named him Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when the twins were born. As the boys grew up, Esau became a skillful hunter. He was an outdoorsman, but Jacob had a quiet temperament, preferring to stay at home. Isaac loved Esau because he enjoyed eating the wild game Esau brought home. But Rebekah loved Jacob. Wellington, the reddish guy on the left of the picture, and Gracie Cotton, somewhat older than Willie and now past, were as different as one could imagine. Gracie would chase anything that moved in our yard. Willie barks but moves like a battleship turns. Given the opportunity of an unlatched gate, Gracie would wander the neighborhood while Welly ambles closer to home. Gracie loved to snuggle next to any human with a pulse. Welly wants to know you're there, but he's the Esau among us. He'll lick you in the face for food, but let's not overdo it. Thank you. Differences in Isaac's children were evident from before they were born. They were having a wrestling match even in Rebekah's womb. At birth, Esau was anxious and entered the daylight first, but Jacob was not letting him out of arm's reach. These boys' descendants are still in a tug of war to this moment. Differences are as natural in a family as similarities, and it's not just appearances. There are the dimensions of preference and spirit also. Esau preferred having a bow in his hand, stalking game in the woods. Jacob was a homebody. He was the kid who would have been teased in the sixth grade as a mama's boy. And scripture doesn't hesitate to underscore that. Rebecca's favorite of the two was Jacob, while Esau's hunting and cooking skills made his dad, Isaac, a happy man. It took Esau and Jacob about 40 years to come to terms with their differences. Jacob was the ambitious one, willing to connive and deceive his way to wealth and control, while Esau took what he wanted with the weight of the firstborn. Still, Esau was destined to serve his younger brother Jacob. In the final chapters of their relationship, you read it in Genesis chapter 33, Jacob and Esau meet after a 20-year separation. The elder, Esau, has graciously come to terms with how he was wronged by his brother, and the younger brother, deceiver, has gone straight, preferring to trust God's way rather than his own manipulative bent. The differences have melted into the distant past, while the bond of humanity and brotherhood have surfaced to the forefront. Ultimately, the squabble between Jacob and Esau resurfaced in their descendants, the two nations Rebekah were told were in her womb, and these are constantly in the news reports to this day. It appears the Arabs and Jews will be added until Jesus comes, as assuredly as the Republicans and Democrats are fighting each other under the Capitol Dome. So what do we make of that? Well, we must embrace the takeaway lesson of human relationships that we see in the footloose hunter and the heel-grabbing manipulator. And that is, whatever you sow, you reap. It matters little whether you care more for the stalk and kill or the scheme and grab. Anything other than God's love and be loved 
will eventually come round just as you sent it round. For you today, take stock of your own nature today, hunter or homebody, gregarious or introvert, or whatever of the Myers-Briggs personality combinations you discover, and decide today that God is the maker of them all. Differences don't have to keep brothers at each other's throats. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.